LabVIEW has been created by National Instruments and it's widely used across the industry for everything from academic demonstrations and research projects to industry test and control systems and then on to much larger systems involving concepts such as big data. To find out what LabVIEW is, we spoke to National Instruments CEO, President and Co-Founder Dr James Truchard. LabVIEW's goal has been to do for test and measurement what the spreadsheet did for financial analysis. We indeed uh, succeeded in doing that. Now uh, scientists and engineers are able to accelerate their work and with increased productivity, a higher level of innovation and ability to make uh, breakthrough discoveries. To find out how LabVIEW started, we talked to the person who is often called the father of LabVIEW, Jeff Kodosky. We initially started trying to create a tool for uh, scientists and engineers as they put together their measurement systems, and then we were inspired by the Macintosh. And that led to a whole new customer base looking at LabVIEW to do many things we hadn't expected. And uh, that led us to uh, graphical system design, LabVIEW Real-Time, LabVIEW FPGA, and now it's used in all kinds of applications and all kinds of industries. The LabVIEW software platform is very powerful. It can control equipment and it collects results data. It also incorporates extensive analysis and signal processing capabilities, enabling results to be processed and often looped back to repeat actions with slightly different parameters, so that conditions can be optimised or more exact monitoring be undertaken in particular ways. This large capability is accomplished within a simple environment by using graphical programming techniques. It enables engineers and scientists to run very complex routines relatively easily. To find out how to program in LabVIEW, we spoke to Dr. Charlotte Nicolau of National Instruments. In LabVIEW, you program in a language known as G, which is our graphical programming language. And what we mean by graphical is that you have a number of images that represent different functions in your program. You put these in an order that you want, you wire them together, and that defines the order of execution of your program. If you want to make it more complicated, you can start to introduce loops, if statements, etc., to build up a much more complex program. To show how LabVIEW programming works in practice, Dr. Nicolau gave a short demonstration of setting up a simple data logging application. This is a LabVIEW virtual instrument or VI. It has two parts, the front panel on the left and the block diagram on the right. The front panel is where you build your user interface by adding pre-built items. Here we have added a chart and now we are adding a start button. The block diagram is where you build your code. Each front panel item appears here to allow you to read and write from your user interface. LabVIEW uses a graphical programming language, which means that the programming is done using images. Each image represents a different function. We can use this DAC Assistant function to read from a connected USB data acquisition device. The function automatically finds the hardware, we configure the read settings, and then it builds the code behind our settings choices. To see the data on the chart, we can wire the data from the read function into the chart. If we want to save the data, we can use this function. We select the file settings, such as type and location, and then we wire the data into the function. We can also add standard programming structures, such as for loop or while loop. Now, everything inside this loop will execute until we tell it to stop with the button. When we run the program, we can see that the data is being collected from the data acquisition device and the program stops when we press the start button. To see how LabVIEW works out in reality, we talked to some engineers who have used LabVIEW in some real-life applications. LabVIEW is an enabler. It enables scientists and engineers to measure the physical world around them. I started out as a physics undergraduate with no software experience and was tasked with performing a complex impedance measurement. I was able to use LabVIEW to perform the measurement in an automated fashion and capture the data. Since then, I've gone on to measure mobile phone handsets, capture complex waveform data and even test satellite payloads. And then in a 5G research project at Bristol University. So we've developed a massive MIMO testbed, um, which currently holds the record for spectrum efficiency. 
and we've designed and developed the entire system on the LabVIEW platform. And we've used LabVIEW because it allows us to form a good base layer of um, development where the hardware is really integrated with the software. We don't have to bespokely develop the intricacies of all the, the hardware connections down at the, the low level between FPGAs. So we can start to build immediately on top of this and look at implementing the features and focusing on the, the algorithms and the implementation that matters for the research. These are just two examples, but there are many more where LabVIEW has been used in very interesting and innovative ways. Thank <laughs> you.